Hey, what's happening guys? Today, I've got this guy for us to look at. USB oscilloscope designed by Lotto Instruments. And this is a modular type of package. Like you can see this says OSC, then all these X's. And this will tell you what's going on with all these designator numbers. So let's see what we got in the box here. This is the OSCH-02S. OSCH, so H is D and F. Isolated and differential. F is M and X. <laughs> Android support, signal generator, and logic analyzer. So here's the device, DE1, DE2, channel A, channel B, little USB back there, and then we have this, I would assume, probe and accessory pack in here. So let's see what's going on in here. This will be the signal generator module. <laughs> Neat. So that plugs into either that one or the other one, we'll have to find out. Amplitude and offset. Signal generator output scope, maybe. Yeah. We'll have to figure out exactly how this works by reading the directions and also downloading the software so what else do we have we got a BNC to alligator clip really nice uh, USB A to B cable we have our probes 1 in 10x oscilloscope probes, probe accessory kit, and that one's hooked onto the bag. So these are disappointing 60 megahertz. Huh. So what are the specs on this scope? Have to check it out online be right back all right so we have the OSCH 02 that's this guy here whoops that ain't good let me move this a little bit uh oh hope that didn't make you dizzy okay so OSCH 02 we have the S, right? O S C H O two S, which they don't even list. So it looks like it's selling for between one hundred and fifty to two hundred bucks. Yeah, not a lot of information there. Hang on one second. All right, I'm looking on Amazon. This is the closest one I could find, OSC 202F. This one has logic analyzer. We don't have the logic analyzer. Let me see if we can find some specs on it. No, not so much. Hmm. There. This doesn't look exactly like ours, but it's pretty close. And what I find interesting here is we have 8 to 13 bit vertical resolution, uh, protocol decoding, FFT, waveform recording, digital FIR filter extension module. 
So I'm going to download the software and we're going to see what we can see. Stand by. All right, so now we are looking at a 5 kilohertz signal. Let's see. We can figure out the measurements. Interesting. The signal I'm inputting is a square wave signal. You can see we're somewhat looking like a square wave signal there. What I'm adjusting here is the fine adjust for the time. Vertical dividing line. You can see we have 2.832 volts. And let's see if we can get a frequency measurement here. Four point nine six three kilohertz, that's pretty doggone close. There we have an x-axis zoom. What is this fast Fourier? No. There's our FFT. So that that's looking pretty good. That's not bad at all. What mode do we have here? Oh, the color mode. Turn our lines on and off. sure what that one does. Now you also see over here on the side we're, we're in channel A mode. We have our trigger. A we don't have a differential probe. We don't have any custom probes. Down here what's this say for logic? Yeah logic. We don't have logic on there. <clears throat> here we have our acquisition modes normal peak detect, high res, very neat. So this would be our data logging function, calibration, PWM and pulse generator, very nice. Here's our filtering. So we can do band pass, band stop filtering. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. And we have our waveform refresh rate. So this has some, uh, some nice functions so far. Uh, for our signal generator. Sine, triangle, square. Well, you know what? We're just going to have to hook that up. Let me go do that right now. All right, according to the instructions, which is included as a um, PDF, this goes into DE2, and I'm definitely going to you know, unpower that before we plug anything in. We don't want any trouble. Let's see if I have a BNC connector. Yep, got a BNC to BNC. Yes, I know I don't have a 50 ohm terminator. I think we'll be all right for our testing. Signal generator output. And we'll plug that into the scope. All right, let's head back over to the computer. All right, so we got channel A and B. We're going to turn that one off. 
channel A is on. Turn triggers off. Signal generator is on. We'll go sine wave. That's one kilohertz. Okay. So now we'll be in AC mode. Yeah. That is about the ugliest sine wave I've ever seen. Let's hit the auto set function, see if it can clear up that sine wave a little bit. Ooh, not so much. Let's go down to normal acquisition. Still not looking so good. Let's uh, swap it over to a triangle mode. Square wave. All right, square waves look good. Interesting. All right, what if we set the frequency up here? Bring it up 10K. All right, so now we're looking at a 10K square wave. So we spread that apart a little bit. Not too bad. Just the time here. Yeah, it's not too bad. All right, let's go back here. Back to the sine wave. Ouch. Man, that is just ugly. I'm not communicating with anything. Measurements. Hmm. I mean, that just doesn't look... Well, definitely we're on 10x. That's one problem. Baseline. Hmm. Oh, wow. Let's, uh... Throw this down to... Back to 1000 hertz. Yeah, look at that. Let me try and swap something around here. Hang on just a second. All right, you're with me still? I'm going to adjust the out, output, output amplitude. What's happening here is we're clipping. Now we've got a sine wave. Then we also have this offset control. This is uh, somewhat interesting. Yeah, that's not so bad. Now, if we take a look down here at the bottom of the screen, you can see we have our measurements, our frequency, period, pulse width, duty rate, rise time. All right, let's go back up here. And let's go to... Uh, 10,000, 10 kilohertz again. Okay. Can we adjust this enough? No. Nope. So down here, we've got our frequency 9.993 kilohertz. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not so bad in this state. Let's try as it as a triangle wave. Looks good. Square wave, whoa! Let's go a hundred thousand. And let's see what the auto set function can do with a hundred K. Not bad, not bad, figured it right out. So that's impressive. All right, we're in normal mode, let's go peak detect. Not so much different. High res. High res looks pretty good. Linear, let's go sign on sign interpolation. Yeah. Yeah, that is pretty good. 
not 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 too shabby at all not too shabby at all so one other thing i want to look at is protocol decoding now if you take a look here you can see i'm running an i squared c uh, oled screen on this raspberry pi pico so we're going to hook up the oscilloscope so yellow channel one is our data and channel two is our clock and we're gonna head over to the computer and see if we can decode that I squared C signal all right so I follow the directions we come over here to decoding you can see now decoding is off we turn it on I squared C it says next we are to right click in this window right click but there is no yeah you see there's just nothing we're supposed to be able to get our decoding there and there's nothing going on so this particular oscilloscope model they sent me may not have the decoding features built in I can't tell you but I like the features it does have I think it's a little bit overpriced if it's around $200 uh, personally I would buy this for $100 not for $200 but you know I'll put some links down below and uh, you guys can take a uh, look at it what's nice here is uh, let's see you can kind of blow up some of these measurements here which works really nice so that works out pretty well it's cool like I said for around a hundred bucks I think it's useful for 200 bucks no it's too much money because for 220 dollars you can get a desktop oscilloscope so now make your own decisions I'll put links down below if you guys enjoyed this give me a thumbs up feel free to comment share and don't forget to subscribe that's it I'm out peace